One thing that engineers know is do not over-engineer something when it's not needed and do not under-engineer it because it will become a cheap product and nobody will buy it. Period. That's how it is. This is Dr. Novak and I'm going to do a little review on feeding rings that been in the trade ever since I've been uh, having fish. And I just wanted to uh, say that some of these products that uh, I review are over-engineered. Some of them are under-engineered. Some of them need to have a little more thought before they come out to the public about did you engineer it and put too much into it? You know, either way, you know, uh, when you're working for a company, you can wind up losing your job if, if you don't think about what you're doing and make the product absolutely right. In other words, innovation is the mother of invention, but uh, being too innovative where it's going to cost a company too much to do what you want them to do or they're wasting time making something that doesn't need to be done. You know, I was told that as like an, a, an, a print, as an apprentice, um, don't... Uh, don't put the time in something that doesn't need to have it. If there's a tolerance of plus or minus or plus five thousandths minus nothing, don't worry about splitting tents. You know, split tents when it requires you to split tents or millionths of an inch. Don't waste your time splitting tents with something that only requires you to be within plus or minus five or plus or minus fifteen thousandths of an inch. Don't waste your time. And that's basically what, what I'm saying is products that are made and maybe they're overdone. Anyhow, let's get into this video. Okay, so now we're going to get into feeding rings. These are basically rings that are designed to retain food. These are glass feeding rings right here. I got these when I bought a... Uh, Metafram Aquarium, and it was at a resale shop. These are from the 1950s. These are made out of glass, and about the, by the time the 60s came around, these particular feeding rings were obsolete because, well, of course, they are glass, but uh, they basically just float on the surface of the water. So by the time the 1960s came around, plastic feeding rings were uh, implemented and they had a uh, mesh basket that you can insert into it if you want. It had a suction cup and uh, if you fed them worms, blood worms, the blood worms would go through it and the, they would pick out the blood, blood worms out of the little bitty slots, much like uh, this one here. This is glass. You see the slots? So what you do is you put some blood worms in here and let them crawl out here and the fish come and grab them. Uh, other than that, this particular feeder doesn't have any other, it's not multiple use. It's basically for frozen food or something like that. It looks good. It's all hand done. But uh, practical wise, it was something that uh, that wasn't, as practical as I wanted it to be. So these floating fish feeders, I wish someone would have told me this, but we didn't have YouTube back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Not to waste your money on certain feeder rings. Don't waste your money. They may be cheap. They entice you with their inexpensiveness. But in the long run, they're going to turn around and... Uh, you're not going to be satisfied with them. Uh, you can make feeder rings. Here's a ring right here made out of plastic. I don't know. This could be to a shower curtain or something. It floats. This could be a feeder ring. Costs next to nothing. It's something that I have. Um, there's lots of inexpensive feeding rings out there. And of course, the upside to feeding rings is that they contain the food. They don't allow it to spread all over the aquarium if you're using flake food or if you happen to be using uh, 
granular uh, food. I, uh, I personally use the Tetra, and it prevents it from spreading all over the aquarium. And the fish learn very quickly where they're to be fed, almost like the Skinner experiments that were done on fish, where um, you're training your fish to know where they're going to be fed, food, and you don't have to shut off pumps. And st If you have a wear, you don't have to worry about shutting off the pumps so the food doesn't go into your wear. Uh, skimmers, you don't have to worry about it. A feeding ring will contain the food for you, let it drop down and not float all over the aquarium so a skimmer picks it up. So I've always used feeding rings, but there are pros and cons about feeding rings, and we're going to get into that. One is these are floaters, and they will float all over the aquarium, so they're no good because if you have a lid, you open up the lid and the feeding ring could be at the other side underneath the glass. So they didn't help. And a ring like this, you can make it yourself, but it doesn't help because it floats from whatever uh, current that's in the aquarium. So if we put these off to the side, these 1950 feeders, and put this one off to the side, here's a feeding ring right here. And this was probably the one of the best feeding rings I bought 20 years ago. And this is these feeding rings, as you can see, use them. You can clean them by pulling them apart, put them in uh, vinegar, and that will take the calcium off of them. As you see, I shortened this one. This has a wire tie on it, black one, to shorten it. Otherwise, these were made by Dupla. And um, they still sell something like this today, very similar, but I've used these for like 20 years. They float, the uh, suction cup holds it, so when it's in the tank, as the tank goes up or down, it just follows the tank. Great because these will float with the tank also, but the ones that use a suction cup, like let's say this one, if the water goes down, okay, now it's not in the aquarium water anymore. So you, as a child, a lot of times these feeding rings that had a suction cup on them, if the aquarium water just went down and just enough and you didn't notice it, you fed the food and it went all over the aquarium because it went underneath the feeding ring. So today they have these floating ones. Um, they have their pluses and their minuses. Their minuses, of course, once again, suction cups. I bet you if I replace these suction cups a dozen times or more. They just don't last. They get hard. Uh, this one I just replaced recently. What happens is they just wind up, you can see this one already around the edge here is starting to wear, and it won't last long before I have to replace the suction cup. That's a big hassle, constantly replacing the suction cups. But like I said, it floats, so it will go like this. But the trouble is, sometimes the fish get aggressive, and they can knock the food underneath here because it really just basically floats on top with no depth into the aquarium. So now they have no depth into the aquarium, so therefore when they float, food can still be pushed underneath. It does happen with aggressive fish. So now we're going to get into the more advanced feeding rings that are out there. These cost a little bit more. Like this one, for example. This is an expensive feeding ring. It's made by Innovated Marine. And if you try to go on Amazon to buy one of these right now, they're out of, out of stock. But these use a magnet. And the, the parts, it comes apart. And you can use it at, like this, a feeding ring. Okay, but you have the same problem once again. If the tank water goes down, the food can go underneath it. So, but this can be adjusted with the magnet on the back. Okay, when I bought this, this isn't cheap. First of all, I don't like the coloring. I don't know why the manufacturer makes it in blue. Why don't they just make it in black or smoked? But they make it in a very colorful color. Second thing I found out is the connections of this. Look. 
Look at this. So this, that's all the way seated. Look. So what they did is they added an O-ring. The problem is the O-ring needs to be a little bit bigger, and they need to put a seating groove inside of here. See inside of here? There needs to be a groove. Um, that's something that the, the manufacturer, I doubt if they're watching this video, but there needs to be a groove put in here and on both sides. And that way you have a little bit bigger O-ring so when it squeezes in there, it snaps and holds it. Look at this. It, it, it just, I mean, for the price of this, you know, that, that's, that's not good. Another thing I found out is I had to take and drill more holes into it than what the manufacturer had. So personally, if I was going to design this or redesign it, I'd leave these holes out. These are useless. The water, if you bring the water up, the food can go through the holes and into the aquarium. That defeats the purpose of having the ring. The next thing is it needs to be held in better. The next thing also is this second piece here, get rid of it. Just manufacture the whole thing like this and leave these holes out. I know why they put them in, but personally, if you have enough current and you have it like this, the fish are going to learn. And next thing is, if you have it like this, and I tested this on my goldfish and my tropical, goldfish get in here and it gets stuck. So bigger fish, this isn't that great. So it's, it's a good thought, but it doesn't really implement well. If I was going to manufacture it, I would leave these holes out. I'd place more holes in the bottom, as I have done. I added a hole here and then added holes in between holes and made more because now the fish go up and they can actually grab the food out of it a lot easier another thing this is designed for is to put frozen food in so you put a couple of cubes or three cubes of food in there it melts the fish wait by the feeder they eat the food it's great that design works good as long as you have more holes in it so if I was going to manufacture it, this is how I would do it, but I'd leave these two holes out. No reason to even have those in there. That way you can take it apart, have it as a ring like this, or put it back together, but make sure it stays together. This one stays a little tighter than the other one. That is why I use this one than the bottom piece. It's got a magnet. So even then, you can move this back and forth with the magnet on the aquarium if food gets stuck in here you can move it up and down and it will make the food come out it's it's a good idea it needs to not be bright blue black would be better smoke would be better this could be black this could be smoke leave these two holes out and just make it so there's plenty of holes in there and now i have zero problems with it since it's been modified. It's it's decent because I like it. I use it on the 90 gallon because when I feed my fish once a day, I feed them like brine shrimp or myosin or something like that, frozen. Put the cubes in here. It melts. They know where to go. I have zero problems now since I modified it. With the way it comes, you'll notice there is a problem with food and everything else. So the next one I want to show you it is not a cheap feeder. This one. Now this feeder is by Two Little Fishies. And it is deep. It comes apart here. There's a foam inside here. Uh, a lot of these that have plastic in them like this will have a foam of some kind. A styrofoam or a foam that uh, is uh, not subject to being uh, waterlogged. Sometimes they will get waterlogged, but as you notice, look at this, the way this is hinged up, and look at this compared to the Dupla that's 20 years old. Look familiar, doesn't it? Same hinge kind of workout, same everything. It's almost a direct copy of the Dupla here that's 20 years old that uh, Julia sprung kind of copy from. But this just snaps in here, 
And of course, once again, it uses a magnet, so you don't have to worry about suction cups and replacing them. The good thing of it is it floats, once again, or it can go like this on top of the water, so it will be close. Or you can have it out this way. The good thing of it is, is the water line comes about here in the center of the rings, which means that as much as sticking out of the water is sticking into the water, which helps so when fish go knocking it around, uh, stuff doesn't go underneath it and go floating off on the top. So I like that because it's made thick enough to prevent food from going underneath it as fish come and knock it around. Like I said, you'll see a line in here. That line, uh, that's that's almost like the watermark. Let's see if I can get it. There it is. And the water comes about that high, maybe a little bit higher. So you do have a lot of this sticking in there. Um, because it's innovation like the du uh, Dupla one, uh, it's great. I have uh, nothing bad to say about it. It's worked out great for the goldfish. It's got a big, huge diameter of at least almost four inches, three and a half, at least three inches here, three and a half inches. Total thing could be four inches. Uh, no complaints about it. It is a little costly. It is a little ex ex expensive. I think it's $20, but it was well worth the $20. Now, the reason basically I'm showing you this is because it's nice when you can buy a feeder like this and have it 20 years and use it for over 20 years. That's great. Uh, you have no problems. It does the work you want it to. This one, like I said, if they made it like this, that, that would be more than enough. Leave out the top holes. That's manufacturing that they're doing. They should manufacture more holes in here like this. That way it'll hold your frozen cubes. And they have the magnet. So it's easily movable up and down. And plus the fact if the aquarium water can be up to, let's say, here, meaning it can have time to go down. There's a lot of leeway in there before it would go below the ring, like we used to have in uh, the old days where once you put a ring in, if the water went below it, then all the food would just come out the bottom. But this one gives you some leeway because of how high it is. I, all I know is these holes allow food to escape out of here and go into your aquarium. Uh, I don't like that. That's, that can be taken out in the design. So I would redesign this. It would probably be cheaper, uh, less manufacturing. Putting more holes in the bottom would be more manufacturing, but leaving these holes out, leaving this part out of the whole thing, um, you're going to save money. You could make two rings. I don't see any purpose of the the second part, really. I'm, I'm just being honest. I just don't see any purpose in it. I'm sure people are going to say, oh, it's good to channel the food down, but I personally think the manufacturer can do away with it. The two little fishy ones uh, is like the Dupla. I'm going to say this is thumbs up because it's thick. It allows it to be thick enough that even... Uh, fish that are more aggressive and like to bang on the food or have the food go underneath it. It doesn't permit that. Maybe uh, one or two pieces may go underneath it. You don't really then have to stop the filter when you go to feed the fish because it does. Now I did a little experiment with the goldfish just to show you that when you are doing this and you are uh, feeding with a ring, your fish get used to it. They get trained. I literally moved the ring in a different spot, maybe six inches away from the original spot it was at, but the fish kept going back to the original spot. They get trained. Here's where you feed them. Here's where all the food's going to be. Uh, some of the fish that aren't as aggressive, like the goldfish, for example, the black one I have, uh, black ranchu, He's not as aggressive. He doesn't come up to the top. He basically stays at the bottom of the aquarium to get his food. And therefore, since it goes strictly down far 
him, he picks it up at the bottom. Sometimes you have to watch out for fish that are a little more aggressive. They're going to come up to the top, eat a lot of food. When they knock the food around, it will go directly down. These are something that, to me, I, I would say are a mainstay of an aquarium. Yes, there are other products out there that could be less expensive than this one. I do not have them on hand. Do they work as good? I don't know. All I know is the products I'm showing you, like the Dupla product, this is 20 years old. I've been using that for 20 years. Even people have made comment on my video, what's that black thing in the corner of your 90-gallon aquarium? Well, it's, it was this feeder right here, now being replaced with this magnetic feeder right here because I feed the fish, but uh, I also can feed them frozen. And that's what this is made for. You just take your fro frozen cubes and put them in here and let them defrost as they're in the aquarium and yeah, very slowly the food comes out. My fish love brine shrimp the best. Uh, the Mayansen shrimp is good but brine shrimp is heavier and they love it and you just put it in here. That way you don't have to get a, a, a net and thaw it out. So anyhow that's it for this video. I wish I could have seen a video like this. These floaters like this and like this, and you can make them, they're no good. They, they're absolutely useless. And a specialized feeder like this, unfortunately, it's too specialized. It's no good either. It's it's something you buy, and uh, it it's novelty. Let, let me put it that way. Save your money. If you're going to spend money, I would, I would suggest something like this, or maybe something like this. It has to be modified to work correctly to me. If they sold it like this, it would be a lot better for the manufacturer to save money. Do the suggestions, I say. And something like this, I don't think the frozen would work. That's why I bought this, because I don't use frozen for my goldfish, but I do use frozen for the 90-gallon tropical fish aquarium. And they get frozen every single day. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you can make these, but, you know, once again, the magnets work better than the suction cups. If you don't mind a suction cup replacing it, sometimes the suction cups won't even last a year. You'll have to constantly be replacing them. Uh, that's up to you. But I just gave you two choices here. If you don't mind modifying this, this is a good choice for frozen food. But just remember, it does have its downfall and you'll have to modify it and these may not wedge into the thing as tight. This, this one does not wedge in here very tight at all as I showed you. So that's the only downside. But I hope uh, it does good. The video does you good. Until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching.